Hello, thank you for agreeing to help us with 405 Mask Makers. We're making a difference right here in Oklahoma City. And this is to help you follow along with the pattern that we've provided you. Our volunteer tongue has gotten started sewing. The first thing that he did uh, before the video began was that he cut out four pieces of the B pattern that is shown in our um, sewing instructions. Two pieces of each fabric type. We do use two different fabric types. And as you can see, he's placing the like sides together and just sewing right down the curved edge on each of those layers of the mask that forms the center seam. He, um, he does do a little bit of clipping. Clipping is optional because again, this is an emergency item. Right now, Tongue is opening it up so that he can top stitch just along the uh, outer piece of material that forms the outside layer of the mask. That top stitching just kind of gives it a more of a finished look, but also kind of helps preserve the cup of that mask that will help um, hold its form with the service providers. You wanna make sure um, that you are using two different layers of fabric and two different types of fabric to help them keep track of the interior and the exterior pieces. At this point, Tongue is opening up our um, fabric layers and placing them together and still with the right sides together, he's lining it up and making sure the center seam matches up so that he can just sew down that top side of the, the top section of the mask. He's just gonna begin on one side and go to the opposite side while back tacking at each corner. And again, being careful with that center seam. We do ask, we're using a lot of sheets, uh, sheet material, bedding material in our masks. The reason for that is their high thread count kind of has, there have been some scientific studies that show that they provide a denser weave which stops more airborne particles. Uh, no cloth masks are a substitute for what they call PPE or medical grade equipment, but we do want to make the best ones that we can. So he has sewn down that uh, top portion section of the mask. And now what you're gonna see is you're gonna see him get ready to apply the nose wire. That nose wire is what allows um, uh, the mask to be kind of moldable and to, st to make it have a better fit on an individual face. So that wire is gonna be four inches long. We've used uh, between 17 and 19 gauge just steel wire that you could get Lowe's at Home Depot. Tongue here is using two pipe cleaners twisted together. So uh, you wanna have the ends on that, the tips bent back flat. That's gonna keep the, the metal tips from puncturing the fabric. And what uh, Tongue does at first is he's centering the wire right over the center seam on the seam allowance. He's gonna back tack in the center of the wire and then again on both ends to hold it in place. You do wanna make sure that when you're doing this that you're careful to begin sewing um, after the bent part of the wire because you wanna make sure that you are protecting your needle. It can break if it hits that wire and we wanna be uh, careful of that. So this wire is just kind of an extra step that we do to make it fit stronger to the face and provide a little bit more protection than some, certainly than the surgical style uh, pleated masks that we see out there, but also than even some of these cup style masks. So uh, we are still uh, right sides together now, and what Tong is doing is showing you how we are inserting our elastic. We do use two different elastic sizes. The uh, top strip that goes up near the, the nose portion is an 11 inch piece of elastic and uh, he is inserting it about a quarter inch down from the uh, top of the mask and sewing down to a quarter inches from the bottom along that outside edge. Uh, and at the quarter inch from the bottom, he is inserting the slightly shorter nine inch portion of elastic. So what these are gonna do is these elastics are gonna go around the back of the head and help save um, our nurses and doctors ears a little bit. A lot of masks are being made with ear loops and we have luckily found enough elastic that we can uh, put them around the back of the head, which will make them more secure, but also, like I said, be a lot more comfortable for the care provider. Once you get your first side done, you just flip it on over to the other side and continue to place it a quarter inch from the top and a quarter inch from the bottom. You do wanna make sure that you are, um, after you've pivoted, uh, that you are making sure that your elastic is not twisted. Tongue at this time is he's going down to the bottom and he is sewing to about an inch from the center seam down along the, the bottom edge of the mask. He's kind of creating a, a opening down there that when he turns it right side out, he can still get it through. Um, at that point, you're gonna go back to the other uh, 
side of the mask, sew it back tack and sew it from the other edge of the center seam. Uh, Tongue's just going ahead and turning it inside out here. And I'll wait for him to kind of catch up to my thoughts. There we go. Okay, so now we have the mask right side out and uh, he's gonna take it out and make sure the wire is in place. Just make sure it's formed there. He's gonna be aware of that wire again for the purpose of protecting his needle. And he's making sure his elastic is in place, not twisted, and going to kind of uh, be careful to keep that out of the way so he doesn't sew over his elastic and have to solve um, another problem there. He is um, tacking over the elastic on the outside and what he's gonna do here in a moment is just top stitch all the way around the edges of the mask. Again, being careful not to go over either the elastic or the nose wire. We've had such a fantastic volunteer response here in Oklahoma City for volunteers willing to make masks. We are starting with an official organizational request from the Oklahoma City Homeless Alliance. And from there, we will move on to any organizational requests that we receive from frontline providers of any type. We are working on providing supplies to all our volunteers, and we have a team of about 100 people right now working to make masks in Oklahoma City, so it's really exciting. He's just continuing up his side seam and uh, finishing that top stitch to finish the mask. And as you can see, again, he's just being careful. Um, he's coming around the top of the mask now where the nose piece is, so he's making sure he's extra careful to feel for that wire and just continuing to finish the edge of the mask. Uh, one thing we do ask our volunteers to do is uh, try not to use pens when possible on any of our uh, um, mask making projects, just to not pierce that fabric. Uh, no cloth mask is a substitute for uh, official medical equipment, but we are trying to make them to high enough standards that they can be as effective as possible for our um, providers. So thank you for taking the time to watch this, and I hope that's helpful. You can reach us at uh, 405maskmakers.com or at 405maskmakers at gmail.com. And there you go. You have a finished mask, a nice center seam, and it's providing that cup to fit really well. Thank you.